Hello, everyone, and welcome to Out of Print Slashers. I am Sean Campbell. I am joined by the 80 Slasher Librarian, Josh LaRue. How are you doing tonight? How are you doing as a Force Ghost? Doing good. I'm, uh, you know, keeping an eye on Anakin and everything, so no spoilers. The younglings. Um, <laughs> and we're joined by uh, David Bergantino. How are you doing tonight? It's been a while. Excellent. Thank you. Great to see you both again. Yeah, this has been a while, man. Very long. Time. It's been this long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this long. <laughs> and shut up. Um, so... <laughs> this is gone. It took. I just realized what that was behind you. That's the Evil Dead trapdoor. I thought that was like where he bought Han Solo's Millennium Falcon, like that little like marketplace. <laughs> since you're a Force ghost, like I honestly thought that was that that was, and it must have been like a mental projection because this does not not look like Jabba's palace, like the like the interior from like mm -hmm. A New Hope. There it does, and then, well, no, no. No. Well, that's Boba Fett, you know, or that that weird little informer guy that with the long. It, it's not. It's not important. Okay, so <laughs> Evil Dead. Uh, have any of you seen Evil Dead Rise? Not yet. Not yet. I saw it. I will. I will say. Okay, take mine with a grain of salt. I loved the remake more than I liked the originals. I like bits and pieces of the originals, but I, I wasn't that much of a fan. Um, this one. You know, it, it takes away the cabin aspect, which is so vital, or not vital, but like like a staple of these movies. So they try to do it in a different way. And I thought it was really interesting how they use what is in the apartment to create the atmosphere that you had in all the other movies. The acting was great. The music was great. The effects. I just, I feel like it kind of strayed away from a formula I, you know, fell in love with. But is a worthy entry in the Evil Dead franchise, has a lot of Sam Raimi's signature trademarks to the point where you'll be confused that it's not actually Sam Raimi directing. But uh, Bruce Campbell does have a very, very, very small cameo. So, you know, somewhere in that whole thing, you know, see if you can, by the next time we watch this, see if you can figure it out. So is he, um, I, I cheated. I looked it up. Does he have sort of a, a, a Where's Waldo cameo? Like, where's Bruce? I got, I got, even I didn't know. I looked it up afterwards. So. Oh, did, is he Ash or just some random guy? No, nope. you, know, you know, I'd love to tell you that, but you're going to have to see yeah. the movie. Uh, yeah. I, I, I've, said, I've said as much as I can say. Nope. But, uh, yeah, I haven't seen it. I didn't like the reboot. Um, but, and I am a big fan of the first two films. Not, I'm not a big fan of Army of the Dead because it just, to me, it takes it into just too much of a slapstick, uh, you know, Monty Python direction, and and it's it's too big because it's not in a little cabin. It's this big sprawling thing, so it sort of loses its uh, magic for me. I've got some fond memories of Army of Darkness, but I definitely appreciate yeah. Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two mm -hmm. uh, a lot because I, I grew up with those too. That's why I've got this behind me since we're talking about slasher and horror movies and uh the effects they've had on us um evil dead that's one of the ones that really scared me as a kid you know that i caught on tv it, it aired a bunch and uh the whole cellar thing i had nightmares sleepless nights over that man as long as as long as the new one's got some of that in there then i think i'm gonna enjoy it um if i heard it's got plenty of that so the main actress who's the one that's on the front poster of everything uh, the whole time, my wife just kept going, I know that person. Where is that person from? And it was the Vikings show, I guess. I didn't watch it, but she loved that. And um, she was really great actress in the movie. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, what, what, we haven't talked in so long. 2022, any uh, good horror movie memories from last year? Was Barbarian 2022? Officially, what even came out in 2022? I think so. I think it was. I heard weird things about that, so I steered clear. Barbarian, I think, is great because it's weird. It it breaks the formula, reboots, restarts the movie in the middle of it, and then really? and then changes and then changes. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it, but it 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 really messes with your expectations for a movie like that, particularly emotionally. Um, 
there's some fantastic performances in it. And some of it's very jarring, particularly when this one particular changeover, when they change lead characters, just is, is very jarring. But it's really super clever, I think. See, I've, got one, I've got one on my list that I heard similar things about, that it's like an experience movie more than like a plot movie. And it's called Skin in a Rink. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, because I saw, actually, I saw Skin in a Rink. Um, uh, Barbarian and uh, I'll come up with the other one, another movie uh, ar all around the same time. Barbarian is an actual movie with a plot. It's just oh, okay. got an, a logical plot. It just puts it together in a very interesting way. Okay. And it's, it's slightly untraditional. Skinamarink, to me, it, have you seen it? No, not yet. I, I've, all I've I will it. say about it is is if somebody said, I know, David Lynch and Paranormal Activity, <laughs> go! That doesn't sound like anything I want to be a part of. And I, it's just, I, it is an exercise in nothingness. Okay. So you, and, it's one of those movies where you put all the special effects there yourself? There's, yeah, I mean, there, it's, this is why I say it's sort of David. The the mood the mood is 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 um, uh, paranormal activity, especially through a through a video camera, because it's okay. sort of found footagey. But there's no there's there's not a lot of dialogue or story driven dialogue. It's more about seeing some. You see some shadows. They just poke put the camera somewhere so it looks at a weird angle at things that probably wouldn't actually, like a TV on the ground with toys around it. It looks cool, but what's a TV doing on the ground with toys around it? Even It just, it, I, I, I honestly, I only got about halfway through it. I was just like, okay, I gave you way more time than you deserved. I'll tell you why it piqued my interest. It whenever I, I grew up in this one house for almost the entire run of my childhood okay mm -hmm. from like toddler to preteen and i felt like a lot of i felt like i had a lot of paranormal stuff there i know not everybody believes that but i had some really bad nightmares there as a kid i, some, I experienced some things and whenever i have nightmares now they usually take place in that house and they resemble the way skin of a rink looks in the trailer that's what that kind of creeped me out about it. You know, that's yeah. what I put it on my radar. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, you know, on that level, it's, it's at least, I mean, and I mean, on the level of what they show on a trailer and how much more you ever need to see about a movie, which is not much more. Um, yeah, it's, it's great from a mood standpoint. And I know what you mean. I mean, my, my whole, my whole company, Cold Room, is named after a, a room in my house where I was convinced a murder had taken place in the 60s, and I knew everything about that murder, but nobody else did. I was a special child. It could have been uh, you know, like alternate plane, too, like an alternate reality. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it's, it, was so, it was so distinct in my mind that, I, that years later, I called my company uh, Cold Room and told the story on my website. I think I pulled the story down at some point. But then... Later, I found a ho a video of when we moved out of that house, and I walked around. <laughs> I walked around the house and filmed every room and pointed to everything and, and told a story about it. When I got to that room, the cold room in the basement, I told the story word for word that I told 25 years later on my website, having not really seen that video in wow. 25 years. So you know how you romanticize things and you, you, they, they, they grow bigger over time, particularly from when you were a kid? This mm -hmm. was exactly the same as it was when I was a kid. That's, that, that's like a chill situation. That, yeah. that makes me think somebody got murdered there. So. Yeah, it was, a, it was a, a flight attendant in her 20s, short bobbed uh, brunette hair, she was, had her um, uniform on. It was a mini skirted olive colored uniform with a pillbox hat and 
the last image I have of her is sprawled on a pile of debris in this room, dead and strangled. I grew up convinced that that's what happened in that in that basement room in the house. Okay, so you believe in the paranormal? Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's hard to segue, but uh, well, speaking of children, I have a segue. <laughs> <laughs> um, I took the last couple of years off uh, of working on, uh, you know, big name video games, and I think Sean did too. Have you been up to anything like that, David? Working on, like playing, you mean, or working on? Working on, being a part of. Um, well, I mean, this probably the biggest one besides Dying Light, uh, which I'm still working on, is this. But I can't, I, I didn't get to say this earlier, but I, it's still in production, so I still can't really talk about it. That's fine. I was just asking, I was just letting people know that you are part of that. That's all. Awesome. Killer Sorry. clowns, man. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Now, that, now that's going to be great for both. That's going to be, I can say this. It's going to be great for both who, both people who are fans of the original movie, but also those who are into reboots and modernization of, of a franchise. Okay. I and especially, with my involvement and long-term fandom of the movie, you know, a lot, it's got that, it's, I made sure it had that from the writing standpoint. That's awesome. I thought that I heard the rights to Killer Clowns, uh, the same person owns Critters, I think, was the, is that it? Critters? I don't think so. I'm not certain of that because because it's uh, MGM controls the rights okay. to come out. Sean, you ever seen Critters? I I, I already know the answer. <laughs> hey, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's first movie was a Critters what? movie. Critters three, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. George Clooney popped in the Killer uh, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. That's right. Yeah, that was part three too. I think. And like Jennifer Aniston, Leprechaun. Leprechaun, what two? Uh, the first one actually. Oh, first one. Okay. Yeah, she kicked that. She kicked that whole series off. <laughs> it's a movie that she probably wish would go away. You know, there was actually a headline about her, some interview with her that said the movie Jennifer Aniston is embarrassed she was in. I bet. <laughs> and I didn't read the article, but it's probably that. I would love to have that as my story. You know, yeah. be like, yeah, I was in, I was in Leprechaun. You know, that that'd be fun for me to tell people. <laughs> To me, that's a that that's a dream big moment. That's the, that's when you say, "Hey, I can do anything in the world. I survived Leprechaun Two to become Jennifer Aniston." <laughs> then you all see the Children of the Corn remake, the second remake, <laughs> the one that just came out. It, it, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. looks it, it looks did. really good. Have you guys both seen it? Yeah, I didn't know there was another one. Well, I first heard about it because somebody was blasting the movie in an article saying that Children of the Corn's woke. And I'm like, okay, that word is used way more often than it should be. And half the time, it's not even correct. No, I was it, like, mm-hmm. they, made, they, made, they made the main evil kid a girl. I'm like, is that the only thing woke about this? Like, there's nothing I, that doesn't apply to this got movie. got real characters in it? Yeah, there, there's depth. I mean, some of the characters can't act, but... Um, well, it is like it, the fifteenth remake, so. Well, it it was a good way to jumpstart, like, because you know, in the beginning, the kids just kill the adults with no explanation whatsoever. This movie is like the lead up to why the children overthrew the town, and you almost completely fucking side with them to a degree. Um, but my problem is the ending did not stick. Like, I feel like. They really should have doubled down and tried to, you know, it's like they tried to be a prequel and a sequel at the same time. And I feel like they didn't know when to play their hand into either one. And when they stuck the landing, they landed on their ankles and snapped them. Like, that's kind of how I felt at the end. Like, I I, I I thought it was great. The cinematography, the acting. I mean, the, the main little girl was great in the time and script she had, but... There, there was one line of dialogue where I almost stopped the movie. It was like, you're crazy. You're insane. You're a lunatic. And I'm like, 
you want any more synonyms you just want to toss out here because you're, oh, you're God. Oh, saying man. the same thing like, like who's writing this um yeah. Where they lose me at every time is when the the way they uh, represent he who walks behind the row. Who? Like, who? They never they never they never stick the landing on that for me. They tried something way out of left field in this one, and I couldn't tell if I loved it or hated it. But at least it got a reaction out of me. Like it wasn't just like creepy whispering wind or like a neon fungus that crawls over Isaac. It's something completely. different. <laughs> you know, you know, okay, I will say this though. They missed a golden opportunity. Okay, do you remember in the original Child's Play? You know it's Charles Lee Ray doing Chucky. But yeah. for a split second, they make it seem like Andy's crazy, and you yeah. almost wish they would have played that like you didn't know. We all we always know that he who walks behind the rose is real. But for a good chunk of this movie, you're not entirely sure that, that that he's real or if it's a delusion shared by a girl who was stuck in pesticides for too long because they bring that up. Oh, I cool. feel like that was okay. a lost opportunity because, I mean, 75% of the way through the movie, you almost believe there's no he who walks behind the rose. It's just mass hysteria. Hmm. But I, I wish they would have pulled that thread because that's something we haven't seen yet. But no. Have you guys seen um, Smile? Yes. Uh, you what you some of the stuff that you said reminded me both of what they did in Smile and what didn't work for me in Smile. Yeah. Particularly the ending where that well, was the worst part. It was the worst because you know give 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 spoiler me, spoiler alert. Well, well, uh, no, no, no. I don't. I won't. It's not a spoiler. But basically. Give give me uh, one of two things, um, you know, wind whispering through the trees, so I'm not quite sure what's going on, or a, more of a sense that she's insane. Mm -hmm. But what they did with her, oh my god! I, I, basically, and and it's such a so supposedly such an acclaimed movie. My basic issue is I think it's a it's it's a movie that people like who never saw it follows, which I think is a much better movie of the same sort. Okay, I cannot agree with you on that point. Okay. <laughs> I, I, the okay. Ding ding ding. Okay, it follows wasn't bad. I just feel like it was it was way overhyped to me that when I saw it I was disappointed, not because it's a bad movie, but because the bar got set like way too high. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, I mean, there, it's not, it's imperfect, um, but um, but in terms of the mood and what the what the evil was and how they characterized it, now there were some issues with it, like, can only the person who's got it see it or, you know, or affect, you know, they, they were a little fuzzy on some of those details. Um, but, but this, but s Smile just the the lead character was utterly unbelievable in in almost all ways for me. She's supposed to be a psychiatrist, and she's the one who breaks out into everybody thinks I'm crazy. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. Well, you're crazy then, because that's what crazy people say in these. And they just like it was not believable that she she grew up to be a psychologist at all, because she just turned into a a, a, a crazy wreck really quickly. Movies are getting dumbed down a lot, uh, especially it feels like horror movies sometimes when it comes to stuff like that. Like like you said, she would have never grown up to have that profession. Um, but you can see just in context, it was no wonder everybody thought she was crazy. She didn't handle it like <laughs> a, a therapist at all. She handled it like a, a Well, crazy. it reminds me of John Mulaney. He was like, when people have amnesia, they always go, who are you? That's not how you handle not recognizing somebody. You're just like, Hey, Hal, it's been a while. <laughs> hey, you. Like, that is a normal reaction. And she never, the thing is, is, is she approached it like just about any generic person afflicted with a problem like that. Whereas I thought there was this really, especially with the theme, which was uh, abuse and, and childhood trauma, she had this really cool opportunity, I thought, to 
to investigate the issue from the standpoint of a therapist and and someone with skepticism and and then and then there should have been a beat later where she's just like oh this is real but we never got that because it was real the moment it was real for her whether she's crazy or not and and so i i I thought that was the missed opportunity of that movie is they could have really taken this you know psychosis issue and done a really interesting investigative that's the good Tori. I'm not pronouncing that word right. Um, <laughs> an investigation from her perspective of that, and instead she just became uh, uh, the victim really quickly. On on a similar subject, this is not a new movie. Okay. But okay, y'all seen the Omen, right? And the Omen oh. remake. Oh, okay. I just so, binged all the Omen movies like a couple months ago. Sophia oh. and I got into a debate. It wasn't really a debate, more like a discussion. Okay, within the confines of the Omen, the devil's handy people are everywhere. They're making events happen like Final Destination. Uh, The odds are against the main characters. Okay, does God have no... um, How am I trying to say this? Does God have no stake in this? Like, any affecting any events? Because we're watching the movie, and there's one event that sticks out that the devil can't have had a hand in. You know when the priest is trying to get it, the priest, father, you know, he tells him, like, your son's trying to kill you, and he's running through the rain, and he's trying to get into the church? Mm-hmm. The door latches from the inside, denying him access, and he dies from the pole, and Sophia goes, well, God did that, because that happened inside the church. And I'm like, so you're telling me the only time God did anything in this movie was to walk a door to fuck over somebody else? Like... Why, like, I feel like that should not have been added. You know, it's a cool effect, but why couldn't the door have just been locked? Well, why did it lock? From, <laughs> did the devil do that? And if the devil can do that, like, then the church makes no damn difference. Like, that was a... Am I reading too much into that, or was that a weird scene? The studio's sending a couple guys in black suits <laughs> to right now. <laughs> no, I, I got a mess to the bottom of my computer. Don't fucking... <laughs> Sean, open the door. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just asking. No, no, that's it's interesting because no, I, no one's ever raised that, and I've never thought of that. I don't think it being inside, even though it's here's the thing, I don't think it being inside a church necessarily means the devil couldn't have been uh, responsible under the circumstances, uh, because it they're all well. Because here's the thing to me: if you believe in God, you believe in the devil. Because if you didn't believe in God, you wouldn't believe in the devil. And so, because they're part of the same system. So if you believe in the system, then at that point, for me, they become interchangeable. I'm just saying, if God wants to stop the Antichrist, all he did was lock a door. I'm just, that's a little uneven. I'm going to be, I'm going to be that guy real quick. What I think happened Mm -hmm. is they wanted to show the door locking and the special effect they built just happened to be on the inside of the door. (laughs) And, uh, I, I absolutely think you're right. I, I, I think you're absolutely right about that. I, th- I, I got to take it from like a, like a Star Wars, like people try to use the force to gloss over any mistake. It was, like, it was just a mistake for a really cool effect. I mean, it wasn't like it was a Starbucks cup. Um, but couldn't it be then that the devil could get to the keyhole just enough to turn the key? Ah, yeah, see? But so then, all the way in. So the devil can put a finger in a church, but the Antichrist can't step foot in one. The devil's more powerful than, than the earthly vessel of the devil. Because there are still rules, physical rules uh, that, I mean, in the same way that, that Jesus was human, and so he could also be killed. Uh, you know, you had some physical, you had some human physical res- restraints to the the devil. I guess I don't know. Okay. I- <laughs> well, all, all I'll say is I will never forget a billboard I saw. The billboard said, "If you eat the devil's corn, you will choke on his cob," <laughs> and that is the last thing I will say. Better- this- that should be on a church sign. You know, that would that would probably pull people in right there. Um, 
That should that sounds like a billboard that should be above a building near the airport. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we talked about Evil Dead a bit. Uh, I want to talk about uh, how Evil Dead Two is more of a re- remake slash sequel than an actual sequel. Uh, I don't know if a lot of if everybody knows this watching, but uh, that's Ash himself, Bruce Campbell recommends. If you want to see what they intended, because they had their first movie stolen from them uh, by the studio, is watch the original up until Ash walks out of the cabin by himself, and then start part two, where the evil's coming at him from the woods. And he said that'll play the way that you, the way that it's meant to. They had to reshoot, like but yeah, because the right, like the like, so basically, like erase the first like fifteen minutes or so. Yeah, but he said if you start, if you start, if you stop Evil Dead when he's walking out, you start uh, Evil Dead 2 when the evil's coming at him from the woods, you'll see what they had in mind for the sequel part of it. So, yeah. I think I heard about that. That's where you, like, mute the audio and play Pink Floyd, right? Yeah, for... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Evil Dead will play out just right. You know, like, when, when the moose starts laughing at him, you know, like, that is where that second track starts. Oh. The deer head and- on the wall. And if you slow down Army of Darkness to half speed, it'll be twice as long as watching it at regular speed. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing for the third one. Uh, but I thought that was pretty cool about the first two. Uh, that'll clear it up for a lot of people. Try it out. Uh, let, let me us know see. what you think. Yeah, I've always I've always known or, or knew for a while that the second movie was basically a – the movie that what i always knew let me put it that way was that the second movie was the movie they would have made if they had the money for it and so they pretty much redid the second movie because they had a lot more money but i didn't realize that there was that much of a connection that you could actually flow from one to two yeah he uh they 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 weren't going to do that but the studio took the first movie. I don't know all the details behind it, so I'm not going to pretend to. But that happens. I've seen it happen to other people, like the guy that made a uh, repo the musical. And, uh, yeah. But yeah, so I get what they were doing with it. It was just always confusing because back then there was like really no internet and stuff. So I remember everybody's like, wait, it's, it's, it's the same movie. Like, like, we still watch them now, but uh, I'll never, the hand thing, when I was a kid, I loved that shit. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do have one movie to bring up from 2022. I don't. I don't know if we all discussed this one. Halloween ends. Oh God. What did y'all think about that? Because like I, I okay, I loved Halloween Kills, and I didn't see Halloween Kills in theaters because everyone said it was a piece of shit. It was horrible. It ruined the franchise. So I didn't see it, and then I watched it at home. Not only did I love Halloween Kills. Uh, my new favorite band is Ghost, who had a song in the end credit. So that was a really good night. I, I found that band for the first time. The only two parts of Halloween Kills that I enjoyed was, A, getting to see the masks from Silver Shamrock mm-hmm. uh, show up in a scene. And, uh, two, seeing the town kill Michael Myers, but then turn their backs on his body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All the times he's come back. And somehow he kills all of them before they can do what they just did over again. It's... Well, they, they imply that the more he kills, the more powerful he gets. But in Halloween Ends, they completely throw that concept out the window. It's like 15 minutes of that movie has anything to do with Michael. Yeah, it's like he. It's like if he powers up by killing, he's been in a sewer for four years, so he's just like at such a low rating it's like a regular it's a regular nintendo uh movie video game power up is what you're describing right. like you have after after you kill five victims on the street you have to take michael myers into the sewer you know to find a pizza i think that was slaughterhouse and <laughs> the game slaughter up. back in the day well, it was like someone someone made a meme of uh chris farley from snl with uh Michael Myers, you'll be living in a pipe down by the river. <laughs> but I, I just, I mean, I just don't know what they were going for. It just, it, it doesn't seem to fit in the trilogy, but a lot of people online are like, it fits perfectly. I don't think so. They ran, uh, out, of, I, they, they I can, ran out of stuff to do with them. I can do without the entire series, yeah. uh, the reboot series. I just... I, 
I, I like especially, the first two. I especially did not. I especially did not like the first one because it just it it. Ah, uh, it I, undid too much. Too much. It undid it undid stuff. I thought most of the the setups were kind of like, especially the business with this doctor. Um, was yeah. just sort of ridiculous, and there was just too, too much ridiculousness, and and it's sort of like the killing scene, you know, like like doing the things. I felt like it was. It felt like the rise of Sky. I wasn't Rise of Skywalker. Whatever the first new Star Wars film was. Yeah. Um. The Last Jedi. Not no, that. that's um, Force Awakens. Force, Force Awakens. Awakens. It, it felt to me like the Force Awakens version of Halloween, where they were not doing a good job balancing what would be the continuation of the story and how much fan service they had to do uh, to throw back to the original series. I uh, love how, like, there's some, a lot of people like me that enjoyed the brother-sister storyline from Halloween 2. And they were like, why the hell, if they're not siblings, would would Michael go and, like, when the first movie came out, people like me were like, why the hell would Michael go after her? She's just some, plenty of people got away, whatever, because he's not, it's not like the other ones where they're related, he wants to kill her. And then with Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends, it's like, at least three or four times per movie, they're like having lines in the script just for people like me, where one, one character tells another character, you see, Michael didn't come here for Lori. You mm -hmm. know, it's a, he didn't come here for her. He came here for the da da da. da you know, stuff like well, Halloween home. Kills tried to undo that a little bit. The sibling thing. No, Halloween Kills tried to show that it was that doctor that was obsessed yeah. with the link between the two, so he brought Michael to her. That, that's Michael what I'm didn't go after her. Saying. I'm saying they wrote that because of people like me after the first movie that uh -huh. were like saying it doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah, well, oh. uh, Every, every, like every, like at least three or four times in Halloween Kills, somebody tells somebody, the doctor brought Michael here. You know, he brought him home. He didn't come after Lori. Now shut up out there. That's that's the way <laughs> I felt when I was watching Halloween Kills. Um, but I, I'll stick with the original. And if I if I'm really put on the spot, the first two, and then Halloween H two O, I could see that as a trilogy. I'm satisfied yeah. with the ending too. Yeah, I actually remember liking H2. Like the moment, the, 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 it, to me, what's worth the price of admission is the moment that Lori and Michael look at each other through that with that door. Yeah. When, that is like a great moment. I got to see it in theaters uh, in 98. I definitely wasn't old enough, but my sister was 18, so I got in. And people were like applauding the movie at the end of H2O like the theater was. I know a lot of people look at it now and like complain about it, but at the time a packed theater was applauding the ending uh, when his head came off and everything. So like they applauded they applauded the film. I don't know why it's crapped on so much now because people at the time did enjoy it. I do remember that. I will say this though about the new trilogy. There is a um, made a lot of money. <laughs> there's, a, there's a short film series on youtube and i really cannot think of the name right now i will mention it later but they come up with like these fan films and they like the 2018 halloween one they came out with a short film that bridges the gap between what happened in halloween and what happened in the 2018 one so loomis had an apprentice who was that doctor younger and he was fascinated with michael so he was he was taking patients out of the asylum and putting them in cells with Michael to see what he would do. And I thought that was a really interesting concept that they could have explored in the movies, but it was really cool to see that. Wish the, and, the makers of the movies had done that. Did you have a final thought on Halloween, David? I finally am glad that I won't watch them again. <laughs> I was about to say, in other unnecessary canon areas, uh, what do you guys think about Friday the 13th, the TV series that will not have anything to do with Jason? I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> like, what are they doing? It's like when they tried to do, a, it's like when they did Bates Motel. It's like a psycho prequel. But the whole like point it. is that he's Norman Bates. I, I didn't see it. I can't talk too much. You know, Bates, it. Motel, Bates Motel actually has Norman Bates in it, so... Uh, it actually makes a lot of sense. And, and you can make a show out of Bates Motel because you got a hotel, you got 
a family. It's how, it's how Norman Bates came to be. Although they go to a really weird sort of uh, Twin Peaks sort of place in the first season. They do. They do. There's some strange moments. But like, how do you how do you tell a Friday the 13th prequel? Like, is it just going to be about Pamela killing people every episode? Like, how do they do this? It, it I don't know, like but it's the, being done by the people who did the Hannibal TV show, and I loved the Hannibal TV show. So work your magic and do something with the script because it's already bought. Yeah, I I wonder. I mean, I know, <clears throat> I know. Sean had been trying to 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 get a Friday the Thirteenth series off the ground for a long time, but just and this is like in the five years before I left LA, and um, they thought they had something going at CBS. Do we I'm know? Talking about me, I was really confused. I was like, no oh, relation. I'm sorry, Cunningham. The other guy. <laughs> uh, that one, the one up over there, um, and. Um, it just they couldn't get it going but and i heard that it it felt victor miller won win the rights to it well here's the, the this is what i was getting at. i'm sorry I, I i meandered the the issue i think is probably just the whole victor miller rigmarole and um my guess is that and from what i have the rights on how the reboot came to be how they had to license the first three movies just to make the reboot yeah did you know about that yeah i thought, I thought the it encapsulated the fourth story. one because they had the sister but i mean I, I thought they just did that for like you know to make a more cohesive story no it was it was it was literally at the time they were going to do the reboot and paramount and they had only licensed uh the remake of the of the first movie and paramount went uh you know jason's not in the first movie <laughs> he's in the second movie so you need to you need to pay us for the second you need to have the rights to the second movie to make this oh you know jason doesn't get his hockey mask till the third movie so you now need to license these three movies to make that one movie I didn't know that for sure, but I always thought it felt like a remake of the first three movies. Uh, yeah, to me. it ended up to be that. I'm, I'm not a big fan of it because I don't think it brought anything new to it, unfortunately, <laughs> but um, other than some some lighting. Uh, the underground thing was kind of neat. The underground. Where he had the traps and he heard the different bells from the different parts of the camp. That was yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, there was, there was some okay stuff in it. it uh, but that was that was the story because that was that's when I was working on the um, the Avatar Last Airbender game. So I was at Paramount a lot uh, and was hearing hearing the, the behind the scenes stories of that. But um, oh god, what was I going to say? Shoot! Oh, that's why I wanted to help because so I think the rights issue. I think what what his I don't know, the issue of the of of miller was the characters not the title the characters so this is probably why they're doing this is they they can probably get around the rights issue by using the title oh wrong i pointed the wrong poster it's the other one. i'm just gonna let it slide okay <laughs> I was like, I, I didn't know Cunningham did that. Yeah. Uh, that'd be an interesting movie. Don't mind me. Um, but yeah, and so, but if they just call it Friday the 13th and don't have any, that they probably won't have Pamela and they probably won't have Jason in it. They would have to have non-named characters. Maybe they, then they can probably- uh, It's gonna be like Riverdale drama. I can't stand that stuff. Uh, I, I wish I had seen. I love everyone. Town has a dirty secret. I don't care. Well, I just love the. Con I wish I had seen it, but I love the concept of Riverdale just because a what they did to Squeaky Clean Archie, and that they just get so absurd in the later seasons, like the time travel and all this other wacky stuff. Like it becomes this surrealist masterpiece. That I still haven't seen, but I know what you. Yeah. Mean. It's a CW drama, and who needs that? Yeah. My life is dramatic enough. Ownership and everything. Uh oh. Lost resolution on the roof. Help us, Obi Wan. You're our only hope. <laughs> oh, we lost him. 
I'm wondering when Skype's going to cut us off because I know it's fit. We're, we're 56 minutes in right now, but I'm not sure if it's going to let us go past the hour. Sometimes it does. I, yeah, I don't know if we ever, if we ever need to, um, I have a subscription to, I have a paid subscription to zoom. If we're ever doing this, uh, we can do this on zoom and it'd be unlimited if you, if that would help. Okay. Okay. Uh, am I coming through any better? You're fading further into the force. Okay, I got, I got one, I got one more idea. I'm gonna disappear for a second again. I'm thinking of the Obi Wan TV show. Qui Gon, you're here. I was always with you, Obi Wan. You just weren't ready to see me. Well, you can, you can, you can tell my age by how I view that. Although I do view it as, as like bad hol holography from Star Wars. He actually looks like a ghost from 13 Ghosts from Castle Films in the 50s. <laughs> Gee, are you talking, about, are you talking about, about the one with Margaret Hamilton? Um, I think she the, was, the, the Wicked Witch of the West was in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that was that was a cool like Easter egg. That and whoa, what the heck was that? Can you hear me? Yeah, there was. Did you see that? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that was me. That was me. I was saying, but tell me how you really feel. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, I thought of something to talk about after this. Okay. What's up? Okay. There's like 13 Ring movies. Did y'all know that? No. Um, I Holy know shit. about five Japanese ones and three American ones. So, okay. Anime? It was... It was originally a book. They turned it into a TV movie in Japan. It didn't test well because it was a direct adaptation of the book, so they made a theatrical version. America remade the theatrical version. Then when they wanted to come out with a sequel, they adapted the book sequel, so they went off the TV movie. Then that <laughs> didn't test well, so they remade it again to make a different TV sequel. And then Korea wanted to import it, they couldn't import it because they had a beef with Japan. So they had to remake a movie based on Korean culture. Then yeah. America did a remake based on the theatrical second, or they had to make a sequel based on the theatrical second one. Then somewhere in there, they made a TV series. Then they made a sequel TV series. Then there's a manga. Then there's a third American movie. It's just, it's a clusterfuck Dead by of Daylight like took the remakes. book stuff for their chapter too. The so, See, I'm only really familiar with the Japanese rings one through three or four and zero. Zero and then, is like one of the best ones. Yeah, zero is great. And then, and then American, the, the first one actually is better upon second, second viewing because it's really beautiful. And I thought the only thing that was good about it, they ripped off from the Japanese version of it. And then it turns out almost all of that, uh, a lot of the, the imagery is actually uh, native to the, that movie. It's what's his name, um, who did um, Lone Ranger was his last big film. I, I just I know the composer oh. Hans Zimmer, oh, one of my favorite composers. Hammer, or whatever, something. Uh, no, 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 no. The the director. Army Hammer. What? No, not the actor. The director. The director. Oh, the director. Yeah. Oh. That was like one of his first. Oh, oh, it's a uh, Gore Verbinski. Gore Verbinski. It was Gore Verbinski, and it was one of his early <laughs> films. And and it was actually, it's just some of the writing and the acting is terrible, but but the the visuals are just gorgeous, and it's mostly him. And then the second one was sort of negligible, and the third, I just could barely make it through the American. The 1995 original TV Japanese movie is free on YouTube, and I highly recommend it because I love the book, but they changed a lot for the Japanese theatrical one. Like, the girl coming out of the TV, like, none of that happened. Sadako, Sadako was in her 20s. She went to college, and then all the stuff with the well happened. So she wasn't an evil little girl coming out of the TV. That was the remake changing a couple things. So, I, so did, the, I didn't know that. In the original novel, uh, the four people that died, one person, he was riding a motorcycle when his seven days came up, and he like he was in traffic, and then he just started screaming and clutching his head and bleeding from his eyes because his time was up. And when they actually did autopsies, and they're like, 
there was like a problem with his heart, but they all had the exact same like growth in their heart at the same time. And like in the second TV one, they, they try to prove through science how watching the tape rewrites your DNA. So they tried to prove it scientifically, but they dive, they dive way more into every single piece of the movie has something to do with her childhood, some fucked up shit that happened to her. You know, they go so much more in depth because she was in an acting troupe in Japan before she went into the well. And that's what Ring Zero, the movie, is about. Um, her years at the dancing academy and all the weird shit that was going on there before she died. Um, so there's a lot of really good stuff in that. Now, I will say the worst movie I saw was just called Sadako 3D. Oh, my and, God. And in it, holy fucking, it was one of the weirdest things. I will never unsee what I saw in this movie. So apparently somebody was trying to, like, serial kill women that looked like Sadako so he could resurrect her from the well. But the tape gets rewritten and glitched somehow. So every woman that watches the glitch video suicide uh, commits suicide. But doppelgangers of the women that commit suicide become, like, half Sadako's with these weird, like, grasshopper legs and their ma their faces are mouths and they ate a cop. And uh, 20 minutes of the movie are, like, these pseudo-girl-from-the-ring grasshopper cannibal things just attacking people what? in a shopping mall. And I went to Sophia and I'm like, what the shit does this have to do with, like, the ring? Pick up some edibles before watching that. And it has a sequel. And people totally say the sequel the actually is better. Sonico 3D 2 apparently what? is a decided improvement over this. Oh, I must see the 3D. Um, I actually couldn't find Sadako 3D2. I can't find it in English. I will pay wait, for it. Wait, is Sadako 3D2 in 3D? Shouldn't it be called Sadako 3D2 3D? That I don't think that one's in 3D. Oh, so it's just Sadako 3D 3D Part 2. Okay. I just That's not confusing. Not to be confused with the sequel, Sadako. Oh, okay. I can't, I can't make this shit up. It's the puzzle Sudoku. Right. <laughs> they made a TV series oh, oh, about oh. Tetris. <laughs> the best so. one, one of the best ones. Sadako from the Ring versus Kayako from the Grudge. They That's fight. Real? That's, That's a real? versus movie. Somebody made a joke. The movie actually happened, and it's like the perfect combination of both of them. I will say that it's more Ring than Grudge. But here's here's the question: If you go into the Grudge house. You get marked and you die, right? But if you watch the videotape, you die in seven days. If you watch the videotape in the grudge house, what happens? You're cursed by two different curses. That's the premise of the movie. Wow. That's actually pretty clever. Yeah. I, can't, I mean, it's... I, I, I really it's, enjoyed it. Huh. I I know versus movies do that. Like, it leans one way more than the other. Like, Freddy versus Jason. Freddy well, had, like, one well, kill. Well, the grudge is more simplistic, and the ring has more of a, you know, in-depth storytelling. And I guess with Freddy and Jason, Freddy has the nightmares, but Jason is just slasher in the woods. So, it, it, it is a little unbalanced. They should have done my story. What's that? <laughs> I said they should have done my story. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I would have, not that I'm bitter or anything. <laughs> would have loved that. And anybody watching, we've actually discussed uh, discussed that before. There's a whole episode about that. Uh, it's on the Patreon. Yes, go check it out. It's, it's yes. actually pretty pretty cool. Yeah, it's a great discussion. I guess, uh, I'll, I guess I'll, the only I'll, thing that could be worse is I can't imagine the amount of hate mail the other Jason gets because he was in the movie and he wasn't Kane Hodder. So I guess there's no hate mail involved probably. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, a lot of people dig him, and they and a lot of people dig Derek from the remake. Hmm. Uh, so, I mean, it seems to be a pretty chill community. They're not like trying to say one's better than the other, or you know, hacking people that say that Kane's the better Jason or something like that. Well, in hey. Hatchet, in Hatchet Three, you get Kane Hodder versus Derek Mears. Really. Okay. Yeah, they, they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each other because one is like a SWAT commander trying to hunt down Victor Crowley, and then Vic, they, they, they do toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Okay. 
I was gonna, I was gonna ask, uh, as we're we're like coming to an end, probably, if uh, all these remakes and reboots and TV series and everything, think of some obscure, strange '80s horror movie because we had a lot of them. Okay, like the stuff or uh, <coughs> Chopping Mall, stuff like that. If, I, if, oh, if oh, you could take one so of those, bad. and if you could take one of those and make a modern TV series based on it, which one would it be? Chopping mall. And you know what I'd do with it? What's I'd that? make I have make, actual chopping in it. Have actual chopping. Instead of, instead of trash can lasers. Yes. <laughs> no, but I would I would basically go somewhere in the Robocop um Westworld treatment of mall security, but make it but make it more of a satire than take itself too seriously okay so so you so like maybe at some point uh you bring in the uh, trash can laser things and they take over the world or well no you just you, you you play with the modern concept of of electronic of, of electronic security surveillance oh yeah yeah okay yeah. For, but but you don't 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 set it in a you know an you know, an oil refinery corporation and, or or a government building. Do it in a mall. Basically, do the do, do make a make a like Dawn of the Dead statement where it's protecting American consumerism. And so you've really got to wonder, you know, is this? And then maybe maybe they sh maybe the, maybe the trash can robots who look sleeker in this version <laughs> should be killing all of these mindless consumers. Yeah. And so you do something with that, yeah. So then you do a whole series, and, and then you you keep introducing new technologies. Um, the 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 mall rats who inhabit the the you know the food court during the day, and then those who have to work, you know, at the at the Orange Julius of the future, and you just create this entire mall ecosystem with the super high tech um, security system, and do a satire of of that kind of story okay. with a lot of gore or have, um, that. like like instead of like a like police or they, they use like auto, automated mm. like person automated like robots that actually can do chopping right you do you blend both and then maybe you can have like a toy store where there's actually like the the, the robots from the 80s one in the toy store at on like a shelf or something like a throwback right like like it could be you could be <clears throat> all that pioneered the you know was the first one to buy the original trash can robot right and mm -hmm. so 40 years later it's sort of their mascot and and in a terminator twist it saves the day at the end against all the higher tech uh security yeah i would watch that chopping mall series sean do you have a, a movie that you would turn into a modern series from the mm. 80s from the 80s that that's the one that gets me um okay 80s or 90s just a weird obscure mu movie you know? eh. i'm trying to think of something that actually see like you you picked a good idea that you could make into a better one I, i'm trying to i'm trying not to pick like ginger dead man because i mean there's not much you can really do with that uh i'm trying to think of something like okay well for, okay i don't have an idea i'm just gonna say what i saw someone do <laughs> Okay. So you know how Marvel has a shared universe? Yeah. I guess somebody yeah. is trying to do that with HP Lovecraft. So they remade From Beyond with the Resonator and they made it into a movie, but in the sequel, they added Herbert West from the Reanimator as a side character, hoping to get his own movie, and they're hoping to adapt enough HP Lovecraft where they can have a shared universe. Which That's I mean cool. that That'd be pretty cool. I mean, they kind of did that in um, in the Mouth of Madness in the '90s. Yeah, well, and the the good news with Lovecraft is he actually pioneered meta because um, the Necronomicon not only did he you know see the mention of Necronomicon across a lot of his stories, but 
Um, he then wrote the Necronomicon and got it released as if they had discovered the Necronomicon to bring it into the world as if it's a real thing. But he also had a thing with other writers at the time where he would get other writers to mention the Necronomicon in their stories. So that there, there, he was trying to build this collective consciousness that all of the, all of the um, old gods, everything about the Necronomicon was actually a real belief somewhere that was showing up anywhere, not just in his stories. Oh, that's cool. That's that's cool. I tell you what, what, what I would do is, and I'm not just saying this because of the video game. Yeah. I think like a Ghoulies or a Killer Clowns would make a fun uh, TV show. Uh, it would have to be like a full-on invasion, though, like a big city with the Killer Clowns or uh, ghoulies popping up all over a big city. Well, you know? like, what I'm hearing is like you trying to mod Resident Evil 2, but with yeah. like clowns instead of zombies. Or ghoulies popping up in everybody's home. Yeah. Oh, well, did I tell you about the TV series that the, the Kyotos were, were coming up with back in the day? I think you, yeah, I think you mentioned it. Yeah. Like it, it, their original idea for for a um, series, and and a lot of it has to do with what any what would be a reasonable budget even today for a, you know for because think of think of how effects intensive and makeup intensive like a clowns would be. So the way they did it was actually very much like the way they approached War of the Worlds, which was it was a. Um, a fugitive situation where somebody is framed for something the clowns did and has to run from town to town. No one will believe him that the clowns are there. So that means the clowns only pop up as clowns and very sparingly. Hmm. Um, okay. And it's more of a mystery of him trying to reveal to the world that the clowns are around. And in some cases, the clowns, you know, ultimately can disguise themselves as humans. So you save on the makeup budget. That would have worked. That would have still been fun. Yeah. That kind of sounds a lot like uh, Eli Roth's clown. Kind of reminds me of that. Did you see that movie? <laughs> Is, oh. No, I'm that was thinking, really good. I'm thinking of Vulgar the Clown. Did you ever see that? No. Oh, that's the kind of movie that you will probably regret seeing if you see it. So none of y'all have seen Eli Roth's clown? No. I don't think so. It's, it's really good. It's about a, a real estate agent that is trying to sell a house and he finds a crate in the basement and he finds like a clown suit. So, you know, his wife calls him and is like, hey, our birthday clown didn't show up. What are we going to do? And he goes, well, I, I found a clown suit. I'll put it on. He puts it on and, you know, he can't take it off. He oh. it, it it is like, like it, he blades break and he can't and it's like growing into his skin and the longer he has it on the more his skin is starting to turn pale and it's like he's trying to figure out what the hell this thing is because he doesn't think it's a clown suit maybe it looks like maybe it was like a demon or something like it's just it you know and when he starts to bleed it's like rainbow blood it's just it was a really cool concept of like doing a clown in a very different way. Wow, that's interesting. I'm, I'm like, I'm amassing this. I mean, usually we, 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 when we're talking, we come up with all sorts of things I hadn't heard of, and I, I need to go watch them. This is the first time I'm like making a list as, as we're, as we're doing this, because there's, a, I really have to see a lot of these movies like right now. Sean told me about a movie on Netflix last year. You have to remind me the name of it, Sean, because I can't think of it, but I watched it. And I told you how much I really enjoyed it and thought they should make sequels to it. It's the one where that, uh, the old computer game. Uh, uh, the one with Robert England? Yes, where he does the voice. Choose or Die. Yeah, Choose or Die. And I don't care what anyone says. I like that movie. It, that movie got so much shit. And I'm it, like, it's it good. I like it. the soundtrack. I like the acting. I like how they took it back to the 80s. Like, I, Yeah, I love how uh, the final fight, when they hurt each other, they hurt themselves. Yeah, like it, 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 uh, they reversed the rules of like the physics of the environment. Yeah, it. I, I thought it was really good. I thought it was a good love letter to like older uh, movies like that. So it was Robert England started as himself. I mean, that's just the icing on top. Voicing the computer game. Uh, yeah. So I guess you haven't seen that, David. No, I have not. Oh uh, yeah, well, check yeah. it out. Check it out. Put it on the list. <laughs> 
I don't know. Ring versus Grudge, though. Uh, yeah, Ring versus Grudge. Yeah, yeah um, Sadako it. versus Kayako came out in 2019. And funny enough, there are two characters in it. And I think y'all are going to know which ones we're talking. Sophia and I are talking about. They are so good as a team in the movie. It was hard to believe they aren't in another movie that crossed over into this. They were so well written. I'm like, are y'all telling me that they y'all write y'all wrote this this well? Because like a team of paranormal people come in, it's two of them, and they are charismatic from start to finish in the movie. And I'm like, who are these people? Are they in like another horror franchise in Japan? No, they're not. They they've never been in anything before. But it's just that was how good the writing was. That's definitely that's one I'm gonna. I, I'm glad that I know exists now. Okay, I didn't know I needed that because it, it started out as a joke, but <laughs> I, I think I think it's solid. I'll check it out. And uh, unless anybody else has another thing to add, I think that's gonna bring us to an end of the party. I'm surprised uh, Skype didn't kick us off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it. I'm sorry that it got kind of slow there in the middle with the with my connection, but it seems like we got through it. And uh, I really appreciate you guys getting your, on your here. Your son had to redeem you and bring you back to the light side. <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> listen here. Don't, he, he, don't, he's going to come back as a much younger actor that was in the previous. <laughs> <course. laughs> like, and the, the dark is side coming? is, I'm getting it, like getting the getting the silver streaks in here. So there'll, it, there'll be a de aging filter any any day now. <laughs> <laughs> now my that. hair looks like it's it's changing color or something. Yeah. What's going on there? I look like uh. Take on me. Uh, music video. <laughs> to rave in the cabin. Uh, you know, they, they keep remaking these movies. Like, uh, Cabin Fever got remade. You know, it wasn't even 20 years old. Uh, one that I would love to see is like a TV series or like an anthology thing. Or a remake done as like a prequel would be Cabin in the Woods. Like, I would love to see other scenarios play out oh uh, okay I, I was i was wondering where you were going with that but you're you're right there's so many different objects in it yeah i i, I could see cabin in the woods being a tv series yeah i could definitely see that because that Cut. movie left me wanting more and that's the first time a movie did that for a long time at that point mm -hmm. uh it's, it's i've had a couple more since then but yeah that one definitely when you see all the creatures and everything it's like ah i want to see that you know Speaking of, um, you know how Jordan Peele did uh, Get Out, Us, and Nope? Mm -hmm. I, I heard he's going to try to remake People Under the Stairs. But that's a weird one for him to be remaking. But it's I mean, night breed. You know, that, that, some of those are weird and but fun. Uh, I don't know what I think of that. What do you think of that, David? Uh, well... Considering what it's about, it would probably make more sense for Jordan Peele to make it than it was for Wes Craven to make it, because it's a, it's it, you know given given the the environment and the characters. Um, that said, I mean it was it was also just this sort of weird left field Wes Craven movie that was sort of this. It was a very strange movie. Yeah. I remember watching it, uh, renting it with my sister as a kid. We used to rent scary movies every week, every weekend. And man, it, I wish that, that's <clears> one thing I wish my kids could have experienced going to video stores and picking movies out. Uh, I loved doing that when I was younger. But uh, I remember renting uh, the people under the stairs, thinking it was like a going to be like super scary or something. And it was just, it was just strange. <laughs> you know, it's like it's it's a head tilter uh, the first time you see it for sure. Yep. But thank you guys so much. Love you guys. Hey, thank you. So it's good to good to be good to get the uh, the band back together again. Yeah, I can it, it, I can tell it felt like we had to knock the rust off a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's been been a minute, but it was still <clears throat> still a lot of fun. That's why I didn't want to like try to give it like a uh, overall topic. I just wanted us just to you know naturally talk and chat and everything. Seems to be a lot more fun that way. So. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you everybody for watching. Be excellent to each other. Any last words, guys? Ominous. Hmm. No, I, I think when you say be excellent to each other, that's that pretty much says it all. Okay, I, I will say one thing, and I know I just just not to get too. <laughs>
<laughs> or not. Just, just, just not to get like too preachy, but I, I've seen a lot of people be really, really bitter, angry, hateful towards FX people, especially with Marvel. The problem there is that it's not that they're lazy; it's that they're they're working their asses off. They have really hard timetables, uh, working you know fourteen, fifteen, sixteen hour days, trying to get all these movies and TV shows out. So, if you're gonna talk online about that, just please have consideration for people who work their asses off. It's just you know try try to put yourself in their shoes before you go and start you know talking about how much you think the makeup in the new movie sucks. You know, I just, I, I hear that a lot. And I can imagine how much they're under trying to pump out all these movies and TV shows. So just please take a minute, you know, think, think about that before you post online. That That's just what I want to say going out for tonight. You're here. 